I'm, I'm, I am. Go. We're here at uh, Richard Miles' office and we are um, happy to be here in the great city of this great city, southern city of this southern land, which um, is the, the country of the Wadawurrung people. And we want to recognise the Wadawurrung people who, of course, have been struggling for their own land rights and against the wars that have been waged against them for 200 years. So, um, welcome. And we'd love you to stop and listen to this story. We're going to tell this story based in this place, this Wadawurrung place. Um, this is the office of Richard Miles. This is the main place in Voltaire, the office of Richard Miles, who is, of course, currently the Defence Minister of Australia. The Defence Minister. So this is a story of Defence Ministers and where they end up when they go to the big Defence Minister place in the sky, which turns out to be arms dealing. That's where Defence Ministers go, to the arms dealer in the sky. Actually, it's the arms dealer on Earth, and then they are involved with sort of racking up war crimes. So you can see we've got a war crime start here, banner down the bottom, because we know that war crimes start here with these uh, defence ministers. And we, we, we're, we're proposing, we're asking this question for you, the uh, people of this great southern city of Geelong. We're asking this question uh, in a way that doesn't obstruct anything um, and it is peaceful and it is just a communication of politics. And that is one of the things that I like to do, is to communicate politics uh, from an ordinary person's perspective. Uh, so what we know is that Richard Miles has met in the last few months with the um, Secretary of Defence, Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defence, Lloyd Austin, who was ex-Raytheon, the second biggest weapons company in the world. So we can see there a direct connection with the weapons companies through the new defence uh, through the Defence Secretary of the US. So we're wondering, what point do these men become arms dealers? And when does he stop representing you, the people of Geelong, of Karoya, when does he stop representing you and start representing the arms dealers? And we're suggesting that he is in the process of that happening right now, of making that transition, and we want you to watch that transition. The transition of Richard Miles as local representative to defence minister and to international arms dealer. And that he's doing that through the US, uh, through the US wars that are occurring and that he is now supporting. That is, that is, that is his way, his modus operandi, his way of doing things. So let's have a look at the old ministers, all right? So we'll start over here with uh, Kim Beasley, a Labor minister in the 90s for defense, went on to be the uh, ambassador of the US. So he puts himself right in the middle of the US as ambassador, and then he comes back to Australia and becomes the president of Lockheed Martin Australia. A weapon, one of the major weapons dealers in the world, in fact, the number one by a long way. He brings that back after he goes to the US, he brings it back to Australia and becomes the president of Lockheed Martin Australia. Defense minister to ambassador to Lockheed Martin, uh, you know, a ranger of direct weapons deals. After Kim, we have uh, Brendan Nelson, Quite a hero in the weapons dealing industry. He's just been named the international president of Boeing. Not just Boeing Australia anymore, but he is going to be the international president of Boeing. So he's moved from being defense ministers in the mid around 2006, 2007, middle of the Iraq war. He's gone from being defense minister at that time, in which he made explicit deals with Boeing against the advice of the department and the RAAF, explicit deals. He went on to then work for Boeing in Australia as the uh, Australia Asia president um, and has placed himself in the middle of a number of civil society organisations. We say civil society with, with quotes because of course Brendan, they're not really civil society organisations, they are Pentagon think tanks that are being set up to make sure that people can meet and make deals, have luncheons, do talks, 
um, and that's where the real uh, politics of Australia is occurring right now. And you can see uh, Brendan at a bunch of luncheons for organisations that he's the president of or on the council, the uh, Australian American Alliance, the Australian American Association, the Chamber, Australian American Chamber of Commerce, organisations like this that are really just about business people doing lunch and trying to get as much money as they can out of the Australian purse. So we have this massive transfer at the moment of 30 billion a year going from the Australian public money into arms dealers. 30 billion a year for the next, for this whole 10 years. And we have Richard Miles, we can hear outside Richard Miles on the country of the Wadawarra people. And we'd love to um, pay our respects to their elders. But we, what we know about Richard Miles is he is moving from being your representative to being the representative of the arms dealers or the arms dealers. He right he has met with uh, the Secretary of Defence in the US three times since July, July 13, July 19 and October 2. He's met with them and since then he has organised to send Australian troops without any discussion uh, to assist the war in Ukraine which of course is, was how the Vietnam assistance start and how the Iraq war assistance started with the sending of training troops, the sending of people uh, to assist the supposed uh, uh, proxy ally country. So what we see is three meetings with the defense and the, the, def the defense secretary of the US followed by Miles making decisions on his own on his own to send Australia to war. And who is that benefiting? It is benefiting these weapons companies that these defence ministers organise. They become the key people in these defence. That is their payoff, to become part of the military industrial co co uh, complex. And we, I think we'll, we'll, we'll see him moving into Raytheon. That will be my prediction in five or ten years' time, if we don't get a handle on this. So, what have we got? We've got, uh, that's Brendan Nelson, we've got uh, King Beasley, who comes next? I'm going to have to do a little quick uh, switch over here. Uh, I might ask this gentleman to give me a call. If you could just hand that, hold that for a second. It's good to see the local community helping us out today. Thank you, sir. So who have we got underneath here? Well, we've got the next two, right? Well, not exactly the next two. Linda Reynolds is still in there, but she lost it. She just like, Linda Reynolds unfortunately got caught in a scandal. She was put in there by Raytheon. So Raytheon's still trying to get their man in there, or their woman. So she was actually came from the Raytheon board into the Defence Minister, but unfortunately she um, made a few mistakes as a woman and was hounded out. Anyway, so who do we have next? We have... Krista McPie, well known. Actually, you know, actually, Stephen Smith was the next one. He was Defence Minister between 2010 2012, when all the war crimes occurred, right? He was the Defence Minister at the period of time the SAS were running rogue in uh, Afghanistan. He was the one who was actually reported to about those war crimes and did nothing because he was already in the pay packet of the US, we would say. He was already doing the US uh, job, and uh, as our friends, the whistleblowers say, uh, he was probably the worst defence minister we've ever had. And so what's he been doing since his post-electoral job, Labor Party was, came out with Rudd, uh, he has been working for the United States Study Centre in Sydney, a, a Pentagon think tank, a Pentagon think tank that is um, basically uh, shaping Australian foreign policy and deciding what Australia does in relationship with the United States. It's a major uh, influencer uh, and it's, 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 not, it's, it's not even contested. It's pretty well known to be a Pentagon uh, pusher. So, uh, you know, so we have him uh, working there for 10 years and now what's his next job? Ambassador of the UK, right? He moves into the ambassador position. And then he's also got a job steering the um, the new defence review. I wonder what he's going to think, come up with. What do you think? Somebody's been working for the US for 10 years 
What's he going to come up in the defence review? My guess is, and we've heard this also from people in the know, that he's going to come up with more US weapons deals, more war, more uh, things that are good for the US corporations. So there we are. He's on the he's on the way. He's uh, in the ambassador position. And then we have Chris Pine, the next one. Christopher Pine is staying local. He's setting up a massive, he's, he's an architect of a massive US, a massive Australian weapons industry. So he is at the moment shifting huge amount of money from the public purse into weapons industries, into weapons companies such as NOIA, uh, Albert Systems, and then he's set up this massive uh, corporation called the Australian Missile Corporation. Just the last two years, and they're, they're looking to build Australian-based missiles and Australian-based missile business. There's about a billion going into missiles, a bit about a million into TAFE and missiles. Welcome, please join us. We're just um, reminding people about, well, we're just asking the question, does Richard Marles represent you or does he represent the weapons industry? Because we have a whole history of, uh, of, of defence ministers. This is the story we're telling, a history of defence ministers moving explicitly into the weapons industry, into Lockheed Martin, into Boeing, uh, negotiating with Raytheon, coming from Raytheon into the Defence Ministry, um, into NIA, now into Australian Missiles Corporation, um, and working for Albert. Christopher Pine is the advisor for almost all the companies in the weapons industry in Australia. He's the architect of the current situation, the current version, um, and he's, he's, he makes his money out of going around and assisting uh, the corporations to get as much uh, government money as they possibly can. So this is the story we want to tell, and we want to, we're doing it through this place today. We're at uh, Richard Miles' office, uh, Richard Miles MP, who is, of course, so, you know, if you look at his website, he says, I represent you, the people of Corio. But what we know is that these defence ministers don't represent the people of their electorate. They represent pretty quickly the US weapons companies that have taken over our nation state. Now they're not the only set of corporations. We know that mining companies have also taken over our state, pharmaceutical companies, that there's and gambling uh, companies. We know there are a lot of companies who are in there, but we're, our focus is the weapons companies. And there's a reason for that. It's because of all, all the damaging parts of capitalism, what we know is war and violence is the most destructive and heinous and damaging for future generations. We know that a lot of the other addictions that people have and mental health issues flow from the damage and disgusting behaviour of war. And we know, we want to, we want to, we want to thank you to Chris Hedges' latest speech on war. Um, if you look it up, look up Chris Hedges uh, talking about his experience as a journalist covering war and the disgusting, uh, violent nature of war. And what we have here is defence ministers, one by one, moving from being your local representative to the representative of international, mainly US, weapons corporations. We have to ask, is Richard Miles really your representative? Or is Richard Miles now already shifted over to being the representative of the weapons corporation? We know he's not here in town today. We know he's out and about. And we have to ask, what is he doing? What deals is he making? What promises is he making on our behalf to the war in Ukraine, for example? Or what promise is he making to the Indonesian Defence Minister? Who we'll hear from, we might hear from our friend here um, about the Indonesian Defence Minister, who is in exactly the same circumstance, who is now able to do deals on behalf of the Indonesia, the Indonesian people for weapons that we know are flowing into West Papua. So we are here um, and we are very we are very glad to have you on our on our
on our live feed, if you're on the live feed, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a little, it's a bit of a presentation on what happens in Australia with weapons, uh, uh, with defence ministers. And we have here the most, the latest defence minister who is gallivanting around the world at the moment, um, making deals on our behalf. He has started to move people into a state of war. And what we're saying is that the weapons industry is behind this. It's the weapons industry agitating for war. It's the, agi it's the weapons industry who never pay for diplomacy. It's the weapons industry who put their hand up as their profits rise and go, yeah, war well, seems like a great idea. But what we know is individuals are those that suffer from war, that war is never good for those of us who are ordinary people on the ground. And not good, if war is not good for the Ukrainians, war is not good for the Russians. War is not good for the West Papuans. And we are seeing our uh, equipment being sent to Indonesia. Our equipment is being sent as we as, as we know right now. Uh, Bushmasters being sent to Indonesia in the same way as those Bushmasters are being sent to the Ukraine. And this is Miles' gift to the world. Miles' gift is more and more as far as we can see. Um, we can, yeah, we can wrap this up. So we'll just wrap this live feed up. We're going to finish off. So thank you so much for being with us. We're here on Wadawarong Country. Uh, we're going to do another live stream about the um, West Papua situation. Yeah, maybe. Oh. And, um, yeah. and so thank you so much for joining us. Press the stop button.